Outside Toronto, this apartment building is in crisis, with COVID-19 cases skyrocketing to 103 and one confirmed death. That's very uh, terrible situation right now we are facing through. Uh, I have a newborn and I, I have been tested positive, me and my mom. Out of isolation and on the mend, longtime resident Arifin Chowdhury says he doesn't understand how he contracted the virus. I was not in contact with uh, outside my household. But for critical care physician Brooks Fallis, the answer may not be so elusive. I think that large clusters like that uh, usually fit uh, the example of airborne transmission. Also known as aerosols, these small liquid particles can remain in the air or travel, and they've been hotly debated since the pandemic began. And quietly, two weeks ago, the World Health Organization finally acknowledged this is a primary way COVID-19 spreads. I think we at least need to start thinking about ventilation and its relation to health. The first place to start is, okay, what are our highest risk environments? Civil engineering professor Jeff Siegel says long term, the government should be investing in air quality in our schools, businesses and care homes. We haven't paid attention to indoor air. And so let's, you know, break that cycle. But in the short term, portable HEPA filters, proper masking and opening a couple of windows and doors and creating a cross breeze could keep you safe. For those in high risk workplaces, these experts suggest keeping your mask on indoors. Instead, they say the new directive should be to eat al fresco and swap a medical mask for a properly fitted N95. Tana? Jamie Marocker in Toronto, thanks.